Good day, welcome. Once again, Bav Sound plus Mini. Check it out. We are rocking minis moving forward. It is June 2016. Um, we have spent the last year or so fine tuning our mini offerings for you guys. And today we are in a 16 Mini Cooper thing. This is a Cooper Works. This is an S model with the Harman Kardon system. So this will encompass all minis, basically. Um, so if you don't have the Harman Kardon system, which will quite frankly be the majority of you, um, we won't even worry about the A pillars in the center channel because your cars don't have them. So we would only be concerned with the door drivers, the side panel drivers back here, and then the under seat woofers as well, which we're gonna tackle in this video um, as well, or actually a supplemental video. Um, so if you see something, if you see us working on A pillars and you don't have tweeters up here, you can fast forward to the rear of the car or the next part of the car rather, and go from there. So without further ado, what we're doing here is we're doing our stage one plug and play speaker upgrade, which is the same product we've been offering for BMWs for the past 12 years, tailored just towards the Mini Cooper. So we're taking out these lackluster, humdrum, harsh factory drivers and then upgrading again with our, our, our proprietary designs, which are consisting of the curvilinear fiberglass woven cones on our mid ranges, big, juicy, smooth uh, 25 millimeter silk dome tweeters, and, um, and of course our brilliant underseat ghost subwoofers, which are going to tighten up the mid base and most specifically give you that extra oomph on the bottom end. So. Let's get started. It couldn't be more straightforward. Mini did a brilliant job on the way we get the doors apart. It's the same on the passenger and the driver, so we're just shooting on the passenger side for lighting purposes. So there are four screws holding the door on. One behind a little cup here, one under this, and one on either side down here. So we only use plastic tools here. We do not use the metal tools. So we've got our Bavsound toolkit. Highly recommend it. It's critical actually for this installation. So inside of that, we've got a plastic toolkit, panel removal tool, and a metal. We'll use this later, but we start with this. So first things first, very simple. This just pops right out. It's just a couple little clips. You can use your fingers and boom, pulls right out. Just a couple little clips back there, nothing fancy. Put that out to the side, come to the window switch. You can actually, this is the, that was really easy. So yeah, so then that just comes out unplugs like so. And now all four screws are revealed. So it's a Torx T20. Again, that is included in the Bavsound toolkit. Um, we've got our screwdriver bit here and then there's uh, any number of Torx screws. Actually in the Mini you only need Torx T20s um, in this particular generation Mini. And again, this is applicable to all of you with this generation Mini. So if you've only got one speaker in your door in your Mini, this video is applicable to you. If you've got that secondary midwoofer down here, um, you can still I should kind of kind of talk you through that right now. So if you're watching this video and you're like, hey, my, my, my mini has an extra speaker down here. Good news for you. You don't have to take all this off. You can just pop off this pod and then there's three screws and then the speaker, it's like a five second install. So if you've got one speaker in your car, proceed with watching this video. If you've got two in the door, um, we won't be upgrading this one. We'll just be doing the mid-range upgrade where we're adding a, an additional tweeter as well. So there's that bit of info right there. So down here, another secret hidden Torx T20. You'll find that again. I always touch on this with BMW owners as well. If any of this seems confusing to you, if you're not sh sure that, that turning left loosens a screw and right tightens a screw, go ahead and pause right now and... Uh, Find someone to help you out with that. Um, maybe your grandpa, he'll know. Grandpas know this stuff. Um, or a professional. We have a network of about 80 dealers nationwide. Actually, yeah, about 80 independents right now that could handle this for you. So you can find that information on our website. Um, otherwise, again, this is super straightforward. We're just taking out a few screws. It's all plug and play, bolts right in. It's specific to your mini, so. So, four screws out. The car is, the door is otherwise held on by a series of clips that just run the perimeter of the car and then clips up here. So we're just gonna lift the door panel out. And to do that, we use the plastic tool again as follows. And I like to start up here because it gets, it's a great leverage point to start the panel freeing from both the top and the outer perimeter. So again, come in with the, the hook tool here 
kind of just wedge it in there and you hear that. So we've broken, it's not the right word, we've freed the clip, the first set of clips. And then once I get that done, I usually just use my fingers. And we come around. This plastic down here is not um, smooth, so be conscientious of that when you're doing this. It's kind of sharp. Boy, that thing is in tight, eh? <laughs> Jeez, Louise, that one was tight, and I'm kind of glad you saw that because you might experience that too. It's just, you're not breaking anything. They're just tight clips. So you see these little black kind of rings? These go, once I get the door panel off, I'll show you. These go between the hard plastic of the door and then the, the door itself. So it's just a little isolation device. So we want to make sure we put those back on. So I will actually put those up here where I can see them. And then we come across the top and then the door lifts right off. So on the back side, there's a couple things we're gonna do and move from there. So the door clip assembly, this with your finger, it just lifts right off. So when you put it on, it goes like that and you take it off. So it's really hard to goof that up. Super straightforward. Now, because Mini has, wa has intricately woven this harness throughout the door panel, all we're gonna do, because we, got, we don't wanna take all this time, is we're gonna unhook these two little tabs here, and then we're gonna pry this guy, this one tab loose up front, like so, and then we're putting the door panel down on the ground, because otherwise you will spend all day <laughs> doing that. Now, again, if you've got the Harman Kardon system like this car, we'll just be replacing this with a, with a mid-range driver. If you've got the standard Cooper, we'll be putting an integrated point source coaxial system in this location. So again, this is the Harman Kardon vehicle. So the way I like to do it is, is as follows. We just unplug the driver, like so. And then I unscrew the pod from the door itself. And the reason I do that is twofold. Number one, we're gonna be installing sound deadening, which is critical because we've got a lot of metal surface there and we want to deaden that, that area where the driver mounts so that we can maximize our mid-base performance. And number two, it gives us a, a space to take this over to our workbench and then I'll show you how to properly seal the new speaker to the factory pod. What am I doing? Total brain fart, huh? All right, so we just take this guy out. These are all Torx T20s. It's the only bit size used in this car actually. So with that out of the way, um, we're gonna kind of, uh, we'll talk about the sound editing and how we're gonna apply it. So I don't know where the hell I put it, it's over there. So anyway, we'll, we'll get into that in just a moment. What we're gonna do now is go ahead and you, what I would suggest doing is getting off both door panels, doing this all at once. I get, I get the whole front of the car apart, get everything over to your workspace. So you've got each pod over on your workspace, which we'll go to in a moment. Each A-pillar where we can remove the factory tweeter, put in the new Bav sound tweeter. Um, I just like doing everything all at once so that it's, uh, some people would argue otherwise. I like to, I just, it just feels better to me to knock it out all at once. So um, that being said, um, we might need to pause it here, change our lighting a little bit so we can come up into the A-pillar. All right, guys. So again, we are in the A-pillars of a Harman Kardon equipped Mini Cooper. If you don't have these tweeters up here, you don't have the Harman Kardon system and you do not need to watch this unless you want to learn maybe some beauty tips that I might offer up during this segment, fashion, uh, you know, I, celebrity, uh, gossip. I don't know about any of these things, it's all a lie. All right, this is super simple as I had touched on before. There's a metal clip here, a plastic clip here, and a plastic clip here, and then here and here are two little tabs that just go down. So the strategy here is to pull out and up, and then the, the A-pillar comes right out. So. This functions as a weather stripping, obviously. So we can use our clip here. You don't need to take this out. Um, there's something psychological about it. So you can take your hand, and down here at the bend, you can just pull out, like so. And just do that. It just takes a little tension off the panel, which makes it a little easier to get. This is, again, it's completely designed to come off like that. So no sweat, no worries. Um, now, how do we get this off? Um, you can use your fingers. Quite frankly, you can see it's, it's 
it's already loose. So, um, so there's the strategy there, which again, you get back there and then check it out. You just, hang on, I um, need to posi reposition my seat. A little bit better action. So you get it out like that and then lift up and then it comes right off. Now, we dropped off all the clips. Actually, this one came out. Usually this one stays in. The metal clip's usually the challenge. So no worries, we just unplug this tweeter like so. And see, this is, it takes two seconds to do. And now is where we need our metal panel removal tool. So we come through like so, pop it out. Don't pry on this, that is an airbag. Leave it be. And you just rock that out like so. Like so, and we'll put it right back in here. And then we're gonna take our mid-base pod. In, in your case, you'll have four, two mid-base pods, two A-pillars, and quite frankly, I'm also gonna instruct you to go ahead and take the back of the car out. So whether you have a coupe or a, a convertible, I mean, sorry, a, uh, yeah, coupe convertible or a four or five door, we wanna just have all of our panels that we're gonna be working on, on our workspace at the same time so that there's just a fluidity to it all. I, it just, it feels better. And it, it's just more psychologically rewarding. Uh, all that sounds silly, I get it, but believe me, after 20 years, you figure some things out. So let's pause it here. Um, we're going to reconvene, actually, in the back of the car where we will start dismembering, as it were, the seats and the side panels. It's, it's a, it's a five-minute process, but um, psychologically, again, it seems like pretty cumbersome. So let's pause it and get the back lit and move there. All right, guys. So this is removing the back seat out of your Mini. It's gonna be the same across the three doors and the uh, convertibles for the most part. Convertibles, there's a couple of little variations, but if you watch this video, you can still sort your convertible as well. So this does not have to be done in four doors or clubmans or countrymans. Hell, if you got four doors, don't worry about this part. Um, <laughs> the rear doors in your car will be just like the front doors, minus a couple of little things, but they're basically identical, and you can totally sort that again. So, bottom cushion. Most of you are going to have these Cooper Coops, by the way. Anyway, so bottom cushion. Lift up. Lift up. Look at that. Two seconds. It's out. Now, we need to remove the very back cushions, which... I need to see how this is going to look best on film. I need to see if, so, you know, all we're doing is we're folding this down. We're folding them down. And then there's a hook back here. So, show you a little trick here. Um, I went ahead and broke the shit out of this so that you don't have to. Um, I'll show you how it comes off. So we've got this piece off. Um, the strategy here, this is how it works. It fits over like that. So the strategy is to pry off the front edge, so facing the front of the car and lift out and I'll show you how it connects and then lift the whole thing up or just pry up. And there's a 10 millimeter here. And again, in the Bavsound toolkit, there is a 10 millimeter bit that goes in the screwdriver. So now you see with that lifted out of the way, the way this clipped on the front was as follows. So all we did, all we needed to have done was free it and then lift up. So with that out of the way, we can now, voila, lift the seats out. It's a little bit easier to get this. It's actually easy to get both sides. This is just the larger side, which people may feel is a bit more cumbersome. So all we do is we lift up, tilt the seat back, and just pull in towards the middle of the car. And now our seats are out of the way, which gain us full access to our side panels. So here's something also that's kind of odd. These side panels are held in by nothing but clips. So the process here is really straightforward. There's a clip here and a clip here that we need to remove. And we'll do that with our metal panel removal tool, which I've conveniently left in the front of the car. And then we have to take out the C pillar and the B pillar. So we'll pop this off, we'll pop this off, and then this whole panel pops off. So it's, it's really straightforward. So the seats are out, everything is exposed. Now the dirty work, which again, it still is pretty super damn straightforward. It's just a couple of minutes. So metal panel removal tool. You have two clips here. So what we're actually doing is we're going to hook behind the clip and pull it out. So it's actually, a, you can kind of see, pretty standard clip there. So just we hook and pull out. Very standard automotive clip. Same up there. And now 
that gives us access to the back side of this panel. Um, we get this out, we get this out. There actually is a Torx T20 back there, but um, in terms of getting all these outer panels off, no screws. So these guys here, the B pillar, the C pillar, plastic panel removal tool. You can actually see this has never been off before and they're already, you know, they're already really loose. So all you do is you can, sometimes you just get your finger back there. Don't pry on the glass though, it's not wise. I'm sure I'll get it. There we go. Okay, so do we, we do free from the bottom. Okay, so free from the bottom. Cool. And then we pull down. That's right. Down and out. So initially, we pop out the bottom and then we pull the whole housing down. And that can just stay down here. It's completely fine there. And that's going to reveal a Torx T20 right back here. And the trick here, and this is actually where you can go bananas with the sound deadening material that we've got left over. We want to go all around with this. Well, the speaker here mounts to the car, so we, of course, want to focus on that area. So anyway, these guys we want out of the car, these metal clips. And the reason is because they engage much better when they're on the panel that you're putting in. All right, so easy enough. So put that down there. As you can see, there's just metal everywhere. So if you're one of those people like me that likes a super-duper quiet, dead car, um, just buy tons and tons of sound deadening, and you can just... Put it back here and, and completely transform the interior. So, same thing back here. Just kind of come back, pull from the bottom. This is sharp plastic too, so keep that in mind. And it's Mini Cooper, so they put hard plastic on hard plastic on hard plastic. So, keep all that in mind. Gouge your fingers open. And again, in real time, this really only takes a few minutes if you're not trying to film it. Oh, that's right. So there's this tricky metal clip back here. And actually, you want to lift up like that. See this metal clip? So when you get this panel free, there's only one clip plus this. So when you get it free, then lift up. And then when we snap it back in, it'll just snap right back in. Uh, normally. So again, that reveals one more Torx T20. And much like the front, there are two more metal clips back here that we want to get off of the female panel and put back on the male panel. Here is where we now quite literally just pull this panel out of the car. So with our hands from the top, from the top, we just pull out like so. This is back here, this, back here. So this is again, this is just, see, so just lift it out. A couple clips up here, like so. And then the magic of this panel is, well, we've got like a light back here we need to unplug. And you may have a um, 12 volt outlet as well. So you unplug the light, and at this point, we just lift the panel out of the car. That's going to leave a tweeter that we need to unplug. So make sure you do that. And so with the tweeter unplugged, we pull the whole panel out of the car. And we, again, we repeat this process on both sides. And we're going to take the panel up to our workspace where we're going to do the tweeter along with all the other tweeters. And then, of course, the midwoofer, just like we had mentioned, it mounts directly to the car. So we're going to put tons of sound deadening back here, being careful not to cover up these holes where the panel adheres, of course. And we'll make that sound like dunk, 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 dunk when we're done. So you know what? Hell, we're back here. I think I've got the tools right here. This is a Torx T20 again. So we just pull this guy out of here. And then, of course, I don't, you know, to, to reinstall it. Pretty damn straightforward. Now with our driver, so that we could get, do the cone design and the surround design that we did to optimize our mid-range performance, our plugs are on the back side of the driver. Um, Boy, I hope that didn't go where I just think it went. Yeah, let's let's hope. Let's hope. We're gonna plug this. So our our driver has the the cord the uh, plug coming off the back. So we would route it down, and then out of this hole down here, and then plug it in there. So, all right, we're gonna have some cold water and meet you guys on the bench and knock out all the rest of the installation. We're here in our workspace where we are tackling. You will have 
two A pillars, two rear side panels, and then two front mid base housings. And we're going to do all that at once just because, again, it's methodical, it's rational, it's sane, uh, and that's how we're going to roll. Uh, so, first things first, let's start with our A pillars. So, again, the factory tweeter just snaps right in. So, using our little plastic angle pick, which is actually metal but plastic handle. We just take this guy and they just prize right on out of here. Like so. Again, be gone with your harshness. Welcome to our beautiful, it's a machined aluminum housing with a silk dome 25 millimeter tweeter. It snaps perfectly into the factory location as if it was factory. It's really snug in there, just as snug as the factory tweeter. However, because we're super hyper vigilant about all this stuff, for all the tweeters, so for your front tweeters and your rear tweeters, we ship a little tube of this E6000, which is a super fantastic quick drying kind of silicon based adhesive. And I just put, just, just for precautionary measures, just a little dab there and a little dab there. That's all you got to do and just let that cure for about 15 minutes while you're working your air around. This is just, we don't want any movement. Again, you can even see the factory tweeter. The factory tweeter I can, I can twist and turn in here. And so they didn't glue it, but we're gonna, because I don't want to deal with that. So we, can we move this. Same thing on the rear. Factory tweeter just pops out of the housing like so. Just like that, it comes out. And the Babson tweeter snaps right back in. Woo, be careful, These, this plastic is seemingly sharp. I think I just impaled myself. Ah, voila, perfect. That is actually really tight, but you know what? Because we like to do things right and make sure we net, again, just a dab, just a dab there, and maybe a dab here. And we'll never ever think about that again. This will be perfect. So, now, a couple things to note on the speakers. On the rear tweeters, they come with a specific set of adapters, which again will bring the two. It'll bring the factory tweeter or the Babson tweeter to connect down to the Babson mid-range. And then on the front tweeter, this plugs into the factory side of the connector. This plugs into the Babson tweeter. And so this will drop down into the A pillar. This here is a little trickier because we don't, excuse me, we don't want any chance of this coming into contact with the mid-range here. So a couple ways you could do it. You could put it down like this to keep it totally out of the way, which I super duper suggest you do. So undo all of that and then pull this down and the hell away from the mid-range. And that way when we put this back together, we can just plug it in and this will be down here out of the way, padded and rattle free. Same thing up here, there's tons of padding and this, these things are insulated, you're not gonna ever hear them or anything like that. So that takes care of the tweeters. Again, same on both sides, so no no shenanigans there. Very clear cut, very straightforward process. Which brings us back to our mid-range driver. Which again, as always, Torx T20. So we just removed the OE driver. And you can see it's got this super tiny little seal on it. And again, we're putting on a, a much more comprehensive seal which further isolates the front and rear waves of the mid-range, which again, it brings that mid-range out into the car. So just little, little design and engineering tweaks go a long way. So here's the OE driver. Here's the Babson driver. Again, it's, it's really no comparison. Again, the factory foam ring off the front through the back. You just drop this down like so. Make sure that ring is aligned properly, which again, you'd think it would be really easy to do. It just, it never is. There, now it is. And again, you just 
just the weight of the driver will see it moved so you gotta you do have to watch it so just like we did in the back you kind of get one screw in there then you get the second and third then you just confirm alignment of the gasket so we just want the speaker positioned as it will be tightened down no well, that settled in perfectly so no worries so now we just be careful here you don't obviously so with the mid-range attached to the OE housing such the last thing we do I don't know where I left them so I am on the hunt ah we have yet another perfect just like the rear we apply the new gasket we don't ship them this way because they get they always get messed up so we got to have you guys do it but no worries it's not hard so there, now we have a perfectly sealed midwoofer. So then again, we'll take this back over to the door in a moment, show you how to reinstall this. It's, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You really probably shouldn't have to watch it, but we'll cover it nevertheless. So that kind of wraps up our bench work. And again, we've done two midwoofers, two A-pillars, and two side panel tweeters as well. So we've done all that in this space. So we're gonna pause it here, go drink some water because it's uh, 463 degrees. It gets hotter every time if you're keeping track of the degree of hot. Yes, uh, and we'll see you in a moment. Reinstalling the rear panel is, is exactly the opposite of removing it, but there's a couple of little tricks I wanna make you aware of. Number one, make sure you've plugged in your mid-range. And then when you put the panel back on, make sure you plugged in your tweeter. Before you put it all back together permanently, take a quick listen. Again, we're not auditioning, we're just making sure that audio is playing from the speakers. We just wanna confirm, even though everything's tested, we things happen in shipping on, on occasion. So. That being said, let's get this panel back in. So it's going to magically appear from the side frame. Get a little assistance. Look at that. And so there's one trick and one trick only to doing this. Seat belts are number one. And number two, ugh, I feel sorry for any of you bigger than 170 pounds doing this. This rear seat. We, it has to go in like that. It, there's a bracket down here. The panel has to go behind that bracket or you will hate life when you put this whole thing in and then realize you gotta take the whole damn thing back apart. So look, even, even though I've done this, that is where it has to sit, right? So everything will otherwise line up. So now, the next thing you've gotta check, you gotta line up this front edge down here. Then you've got to make sure that the panel, again, stays behind there, stays behind here. We don't have any impediments. Don't rush this. If you rush this, it's not fun. So now on this side, we've got three clips. So we want to get those lined up first. Lined up, lined up, lined up. So then, you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm peeling back this weather stripping and I don't really have the tools. So we're peeling back the weather stripping to make room for the panel to seat back properly. The, the key here is just taking the 10 seconds before you try to put this huge panel on to make sure that A, we're behind the seat belt bracket, B, and what I've just found out here, I don't think yeah, those all got in there. And now going down through here, you know what, can you, yeah, you know what, maybe you can just pull this whole thing off. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. So that leaves that Torx T20 that we had taken out earlier. Let's reinstall that. Good thing there's a nine inch long screw to adhere this. All right. 
Now, with everything else in the perfect alignment, we can just redo this guy. A little clip is here, one is there. I had mentioned earlier, I misspoke. It is easier to leave these metal clips in this panel before you reinstall this panel. So again, we come up, line from the top. Everything just naturally just wants to go back where it came from. And then again, over here, this weather stripping, this godforsaken weather stripping, which prevents any and all happiness. Before you snap it, oh my gosh, it's so hot in here. There we go. Now, snap it back into place. Perfection. All right, so with that sorted, now come to the back where we have to tuck the carpet up between the side panel. Don't forget this guy back here. He's got that one snap right here. And then we gotta just. All right, now all we're doing here is we've gotta tuck this carpet up underneath the panel here. So pretty straightforward. Just bend it like that. And then we just, again, with our weather stripping, you just, you gotta do it. Just like that just how it goes and that leaves us at last with our two little plastic clips which I have conveniently misplaced uh, so let's go ahead and do this until I discover where I might have put those put that last Torx T20 in there like so I guess those clips are around here somewhere Found one of them. There's the other one. So you put those guys back in, like so. One on the top, one on the bottom. And voila. So then we just reinstall our C pillar in the same manner we did the B pillar. And then we put the back seats back in. Which I gotta tell you guys, it's so damn hot, I don't have the energy to show you how to do that. It comes out the way, it goes in the way it came out, right? Let's just have that be our thing. And again, our weather stripping. Perfect. All right, man. I am pretty stoked on that, actually. That went together super flipping well. All right, so the panel is all back together. I, in real time, <laughs> I keep saying this, it's like 15 minutes aside, uh, maybe 20, 20 minutes aside. Um, and you're doing two speakers or, or four or whatever. So uh, seat reinstallation, again, it's, you know. I guess we're going to show you. It's so damn hot, but we're going to show you anyway. Maybe uh, we can just keep the lighting as it is and we can get like some, we can get the seats coming in through the back side. Actually, you know what? Let's just do that, guys, because the bottom cushion is so easy to do that I, I'm just, I can't show you that, but I can show you these back seats. So, yeah, that side first. All right, so we put the outside in first. Maybe. Is it keyed? Oh, it's keyed. And okay. All right, perfect. And then, okay, I've run out of room. <laughs> oh, oh, it's hot. <laughs> It's so hot. I don't even know how to describe to you guys how 
miserably hot it is in here. All right. Whew, then you put this thing back on. You might remember from earlier where we broke it. So you put this guy back on to secure it all. Maybe, maybe you do. It doesn't really seem like it's lining up particularly well. There we go. So we just throw that 10 mil back in and then that piece snaps right back on. Perfection. Pull everything back up like so. And then we are done. So, sound deadening, front doors. Kind of eyeballed a piece. I don't know, it was about eight inches long, and 12 inches tall. So, we cut that with a blade. It's nice and thick, it's super dense. So, now we need to get it nice and tacky so it adheres to the car. So, we peel off the backing. Most of you are not going to have a heat gun. Most of you, however, will have hair dryers. Well, if you're bald like me, well, you won't. You'll have to go borrow one from either a your spouse, the neighbor, kind of weird maybe. Just or you can order this on Amazon for 20 bucks. But, or you can just leave it out in the sun for a few hours. All we're doing is just getting the back of this tacky. It just takes a little time. I don't know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. But keep in mind, it's gonna be hotter than hell when you pick it up. You burn your hands a little bit. A couple of beers will alleviate those concerns. All right, so get that away from anything important. And then we come over here and we want to focus on the area where the speaker mounts. So you can see kind of what I did there. And then we kind of just preliminarily adhere it to the door, at which point we take like the back of either our panel tool or our screwdriver and we just run over it to kind of get it to fit the contours of the car. So you can see up here, there's a little contours around things. Pretty neat actually. See, so it just beautifully fits the contours. And then over here, just, just let it tack up onto the sound editing there. Just be kind of careful these edges. There, it is aluminum. You see there how they just kind of outline the speaker like that. Or you take a blade, like a exacto knife or whatever. Just be conscientious of what you're doing here. You don't want to cut your fingers off. Maybe you do. I'm not here to judge you, but so and this is still a perfectly valid piece of sound editing. Just slap it up here. Perfect. Bam. Excellent. And then you just, again, go through with your finger. Kind of just let it come down around. We want to control the energy coming off of the mid-range into the door, and that's what, that's what this does. Perfect. Shown. Voila. Now, this seems really simple and, and obvious, but you'd be surprised. So we obviously have covered up the screw holes for the speaker. So we kind of reach around. He said reach around. Try to find those holes, kind of mark them loosely. Um, this is actually a terrible, terrible way to do this. And I'll tell you why. Because you can't see anything. So you're really, I think I might have gotten pretty, pretty darn close on this one. Believe you me, it's a nightmare to go through here and, and try to do it. Over. Okay, so we've got our midwoofer pod ready to go. And we just need to bring the wires out over here with these factory wires. So there's just kind of like some, we used to call this speaker snot. You can see it's just this black stuff like that. So all we do is we drop the wire down through there.
bring them back around like so and here's where the challenge comes you got to remember which way the damn thing was oriented I'm just kidding so you can see you want it well that obviously ain't right that ain't right That's right. Yay, that's right. Right there. Perfect. All right. How about that? Cool. So, when we do that, we just want to make sure we pull those wires nice and tight so that they're not in the way of the window track. And I will show you what I mean by that. So, again, we want to get to start with the pod mounting. And like I had mentioned to you, <laughs> this part can sometimes be frustrating as hell because you don't know where the, the damn holes are because you covered them up. So you kind of can eyeball it and just hope the screw countersinks. And it ain't really happening, as you can see for us here. So what you do in this case is well, yeah, you put it all down. As you can tell, I'm exhausted. It's so unbelievably hot today. I, this is just, I mean, this is, this isn't really, it's kind of unreal. Be told. And really, you find it, and this pokes right through. I am striking out. Time after time, there it is, right there. All right. So, let's try that again. Usually, when you get one of them, it'll it'll kind of align itself the other way. The rest of them will kind of fall in suit, especially if you've kind of eyeballed it close. And you can kind of see, oh yeah, that makes sense. Again, you think you might have it. This is why you got to watch all the way through because you think, oh, it's just reverse of the removal. Man, if it was that simple. All right. So fantastic, as they say. All right, so at this point, we pull everything tight, get the wires secure and out of the way, and then we just plug in the mid-range wire, like so. And it is, and then we just tuck it like so. We just wrap the tweeter wire around because we don't need it. So I just kind of did this the last few times. Just wrap it like so, and voila. So that allows us to put the whole panel back on as a whole. And if you remember, we only took out that one little tab from up here where we had, let's see, so first you wanna guide the wires back through like that, or you will end up with like that, you can see. And then we are free to put everything back together. The door handle and the lock mechanism. So we just line up the key like so. Door panel goes on exactly as it came off. And then we just That completed. Whew, boy, I am mentally defeated here. All right, so we just reinstall the screws. Exactly how we done it before. And that's 
it's going to be that. I hope you aren't doing this in the heat of the summer without air conditioning. I hope that you are in a pleasant environment, that your day was lovely, and that you will be able to enjoy your stage one peace and harmony. Inevitably. All right. So now we just put in this last screw. Again, nothing exciting to see here. This part, answer some emails or some phone call. Now the video shows like it's a long time, but if you're just doing this in the space of your garage, it's it really is. It's five minutes a door and. So, then this just snaps right back in, like so. Well, maybe. <laughs> it's just so hot, I can't even, I can't even do this. That's, that's kind of where the day is. This really is simple. I don't understand why I'm, I'm really unable to convey that to you in any sort of meaningful way today. Yeah, so it just snaps in. Woo! All right, guys. That was, out of the probably 200 videos I filmed, this was the most difficult <laughs> by far in terms of heat management. So it just goes back in. And so everything is perfect and everything is beautiful. So we're going to kind of pause it here and go drink some more water, come back, wrap up the A pillar, and uh, then put the trunk back together, and finally tackle the ghost woofers. We are here in the Mini Cooper. Front A-pillars, Harman Kardon. Again, if you don't have Harman Kardon, you don't have to sweat this. You're already actually down with your stage one. So, um, What are we doing here? Simple. We're plugging in the bath sound harness between the factory mini connector. Right. And we're taking all the cap harness. We're tucking it down here. We are lining up these two guys here. How are we doing that, you might ask? Well, there's some, there's some luck involved. I'm just kidding. All right, so you'll know that's not right. You can tell because there's a gap. So there, that is right. And, oh, there we go. Perfect. So it's really just, you're just kind of lining them up back there. I mean, I wish there was like a, a better, more like, descriptive way to give you that information. Um, you know, there just, there just isn't, I don't, I wanted it to be super duper easy, but da -da -da -da. it just didn't work that way. I also think they probably wanted that. No, that sits right back in there nice and tight. That's just, I'm just used to different tolerances. So it's a perfect, as you can see, it's a perfect lined up. Everything is nice, feels beautiful, looks sexy. Dice it all up, clean it up, and from there, yeah, that's really just how it rolls, man. Wrapping up everything else, we finish here atop the dashboard. Again, this is for the Harman Kardon only vehicles. Um, the rest of you are already done and will uh, be enjoying the stage one. At this point, we have one last driver. Again, plastic, 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 plastic. There's a mid-range and a tweeter under this grill. So to access them, plastic panel removal tool underneath the grill. Oh, and that's, that thing is in there tight. That's a technical term, by the way. Boy, howdy. <laughs> well, <laughs> I promise it pops out. I've done it before. There we go. All right. Just gotta get one of them loose. So again, we just pry out. Once it's mostly out. And da 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 da. Look at that. So, how do we get these out of there? Well, you can do some of them with the screwdriver. And then for that tweeter, we're gonna need to use the angle driver, which is included again in the Bath Sound Toolkit. Arguably, you will use this tool 
thousands of times in your life for various projects. So this toolkit, again, it comes in this really slick canvas case. You can just take it around with you from now on. It should be a part, it'll be a third, basically a third arm, if you will. It'll be so handy. People will probably, your buddies will probably steal it from you. So again, it's three Torx T20s holding the, hey, look at that. You can actually get the flipping screwdriver up there. Irrespective of what I had just said, or of this news, rather, this angle driver is still awesome. And maybe we don't need it right now, but there will come a time when you least expect it. Should also be noted that it is 176 degrees here at Bath Sound today in San Diego because we have to close up the office to film, which means there's no damn cross breeze in here. So we just unplug the tweeter. Actually, just unplug it like that. So we unplug the OE, this horrible, horrible aluminum tweeter. Out of our lives. Be gone. Beautiful silk dome. Welcome. How the hell they do this? They put it down there. Well, I don't know why they didn't. Anyway, so we're gonna put the tweeter down there like so. And it bolts right in to the factory locale. Start these screws with your fingers. And um, the biggest tip I have here, don't drop these screws down into this dashboard. You will never find them. And for the rest of your days, they will rattle and you will slowly go insane and we'll read about you on the news one day. All right, so now we plug in our tweeter to our mid-range, like so. Plug in our factory connector to the bath sound driver, like so. And then pull off this rubber boot from the motor structure that serves no acoustical purpose. It's simply to make it look fancy. Drop the mid-range down in here. Apply kind of uniform downward pressure. And again, start with your fingers. Like so. And I'm going to show you a little trick with this midwoofer because it's... Our cone area is a slightly larger than that of the factory driver. And so what that means is that the cutout for the woofer it's about a millimeter, and hell, it's about a quarter of a millimeter. I also can't see up here. It's not really helping my cause. Well, I don't have to tell you guys, I can't, actually cannot get up in here well enough. to see what in the hell is going on. There we go. And then while applying uniform pressure down on the mid-range, on the two legs, screw the rest of it down. And don't torque it down all the way. We want to keep things kind of uniform. You see how I'm got some give on the speaker? We kind of want it to settle into place kind of just uniformly. Like so. And now I had to tighten up the tweeter as well. Exciting stuff, I know. Beautiful. Beautiful. The mid, nice and secure. There's a rubber gasket on the bottom of our mid-range. It's sealed up against that factory housing. And voila, we've installed our center channel upgrade. So again, as always, quickly turn the car on. Have a quick listen, just to confirm. Confirm, where's the beats? Perfect. So again, we're not auditioning because we you'd be like, you know, 
putting in one shock and then going out and driving the car. So we're just confirming everything is cool. So let's pause here. And since we're wrapping everything up, we can go back into, actually, you know what? There's no sense in, so effectively the stage one, the way I, I put it together is we want the base and the treble flat. We want, and this is on both HK and standard cars. So base and treble flat. Go through, turn your speed volume, go through your volume settings, speed volume all the way down, because what that does is as the RPMs increase, it pulls bass out of the car. So the less we let that impact the sound, the, the better it's going to sound as the car goes faster. Otherwise, it just sounds really weird at, at speed. Um, and balance and fader in the middle, of course. And then treble to your taste um, as time goes on. We want to give the speakers about 10 hours to break in. They're going to get just progressively warmer as they break in. And so after that 10 hour period, if you find you want a little more uh, presence, I don't know if that's really the right word, but a, a, little, a little bit more uh, volume throughout the upper frequencies, you can boost the treble a bit. But again, these are silk, so they're going to be very smooth. And so they shouldn't need any further um, accentuation. So that really wraps up how, oh, I guess I should show you this part. Uh, I putting the, the uh, thing back in. So again, guess what? It just drops right back in just like it came out. So um, snap that right back in and we are done with the stage one. So thank you guys for joining us. We will see you in the future as we continue to roll out new and innovative speaker upgrades for your awesome cars.